Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time john 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. A lot of prayers are pouring in for Hans Schmidt tonight. The beloved husband, father, and religious leader was shot while spreading the word of God Wednesday night, and friends and family can't understand why. Who knows why someone would take it out on a preacher like that, you know, because he's speaking the gospel and the good news to everybody. He's out to help the community. Arizona's family has learned that Schmidt was out street preaching at the intersection of 51st Avenue and Peoria in Glendale around 6 o'clock Wednesday night. It's something he reportedly did on a regular basis before helping lead weekly services at the Victory Chapel as the door director. At some point while Schmidt was on the corner preaching, someone came by, shot him in the head, then took off. Read verses, preach a little bit. And Paul Sanchez works nearby and says when Schmidt was out preaching, some people drove by screaming and cursing at him. A slurry of everything, really. I mean, hateful comments, people yelling at him, just get off the street, all sorts of mean things. Sanchez never imagined things would escalate, especially since he says Schmidt never confronted anyone or responded to the mean comments. Just before service, yeah. Larry Detman was at services here last night when the pastor announced what happened. Minutes later, the pastor ran off to the hospital to check on Schmidt. Out of nowhere, how does this happen? You know, there's some evil people in this world that have got a bunch of human junk in their life and they take it out on somebody else. So people are following darkness instead of light, asking God to help him and heal him. It is still unclear whether the street preacher was shot by somebody driving by or if somebody walked up, shot him, then ran off. So far, no arrests have been made. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, 
it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. This morning, just days before the Thanksgiving holiday, terrifying moments for shoppers at a Walmart in a suburban Ohio neighborhood, where police say a gunman opened fire Monday, injuring four people before turning the gun on himself. One shopper speaking from the parking lot. I was literally just shopping for Thanksgiving stuff, and this guy walked right past me with an assault rifle. We started shooting. Authorities say a male shooter entered the Walmart in Beaver Creek, Ohio, and began firing. It appears as though he's died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. There were no rounds or return fire offered by, I'm sorry, fired by officers. Police say they do not know if the shooting was targeted or random. We have no motive yet, no, no information on... Um, uh, what he may have been thinking. Nearby college students witnessed the scene. I come here all the time. We live at Wright State University, five minutes from here, and um, we saw a bunch of cop cars. It could have happened to us, like if they decided to go to our campus instead of here. So that's just, it's really scary. Shoppers inside the store ahead of the Thanksgiving rush, reliving the terror. If you guys know anybody, visit Beaver Creek Walmart right now. Call and check on your people. I'm so lucky to be alive. <laughs> Breaking news out of Memphis, where the suspect in a string of shootings is now dead. Authorities say Mavis Christian Jr. allegedly killed four women and critically injured another last night. The incidents happened at three different locations across the city. The crime scene tape still up at this house on Warrington Road, a day after a woman was found shot to death. I found my mother. Yeah. Yeah. Salise Manuel discovered her mother, Ruby Manuel, lying on the floor. Within a couple of hours, she also lost her big sister and a 13-year-old niece. And police say her uncle, Mavis Christian Jr., was responsible. Salise says before coming to her house, her uncle shot and killed her sister, Leticia Bobo, and Leticia's daughter, Tori, outside their house on Fieldlark Drive. Her 15-year-old niece, Taylor, was able to run away, but was shot seven times. She says physically Taylor is doing well, but emotionally... She, she said she lost her sister, her mother, and her grandmother. Investigators also say Christian shot and killed a woman in the 100 block of Howard Drive before taking his own life. Investigators in southern Colorado need help finding a suspect in a deadly shooting. 45-year-old Hanmi Clark is traveling in a white Ram 1500 pickup with a topper and Colorado license plate BHLK27. The shooting happened in rural Custer County near Westcliff just before one yesterday afternoon. Investigators say it started over some kind of property dispute. Two men and a woman were killed and another woman is in the hospital with serious injuries. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse? as the time of Christ's return draws near. If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is, God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Tattnall County High School football coach has been fired. It comes nearly three weeks after he held a Christian baptism for some of his players after practice. Now we're hearing from the school district and a parent of one of the student athletes who was baptized. Isaac Farrell was terminated from his position as head football coach here at Tattnall County High School. Coach Farrell has been very vocal about his Christian beliefs on social media and said in a Facebook post he orchestrated the baptism. Take a look. I baptize you now, my brother, and then the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those are Tattnall County High School football players being baptized. 20 of them were baptized by a local pastor in a ceremony after a practice on October 23rd behind the high school football field at the behest of head football coach Isaac Farrell. He has since been fired from that position, but is still employed by the district as a teacher. Latifa Johnson's son is a sophomore on the football team and was one of the athletes baptized that day. I was extremely proud of him. Because he made the decision on his own. I didn't have to hold his hand. And he did it because he wanted to do it. She says she found out from a Facebook post from the football team. It, it was so sweet because you see the boys and they looked like they wanted, like it was, it was okay, you know? Like, 
everyone looked excited from the ones I was able to see. So I was, I was cheering like, yes, thank you, God. Yes, yes, yes. I was all for it. The reaction to the ceremony has not been all positive, with the Freedom From Religion Foundation denouncing the ceremony in an article, saying it's illegal under the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. As for whether the baptisms led to Farrell's termination, that's unclear. Tattnall County School Superintendent Christian Waters telling me in a statement he was terminated following an incident after a football game on November 3rd and that the district is looking for a coach that aligns with the best interests of Tattnall County students. Johnson says she and her son are heartbroken by Coach Farrell's termination, saying his faith made him a good role model. Well, I get that, but ain't that, what about the ones that do believe? Like, why should they have to miss out on a spiritual leader because somebody else may not agree, you know? Because we need, our children need it. It takes a village to raise children. The Freedom From Religion Foundation telling me in a statement, quote, we're glad they're looking for a new coach who will abide by his constitutional duties. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel vs. Vital. The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963. Abington School District v. Shump, the removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. This was the finale at a Chesapeake School District chorus concert last week. I mean, they are literally worshiping Jesus in that final song. Faith Griffin tells 10 on your side her student was one of the participants from Western Branch Middle School. The group was initially slated to sing three songs, two of them featuring Christian themes. I was uncomfortable with uh, since it's a public school. <laughs> Griffin says she first became aware of the music choices more than a week before the concert. That's when she brought her concerns to the school. The teacher had told the students that if they didn't agree with the religious songs, they could just stand on stage and not sing, which the kids joined chorus to sing. The school also added one additional secular song to the lineup, bringing the total number of songs to four. The Christian kids get to participate and sing in the chorus concert and non-Christian kids have to stand off stage. Second Chronicles 714. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. A brutal attack caught on camera in the middle of a West Oakland sideshow Sunday shows multiple people throwing a man to the ground and kicking and punching him until he's bloody and unconscious. Dude, that wasn't even in the middle of the night. That was right in the middle of the day. It's, it's not right. It happened at 34th and Adeline this weekend. Police say the sideshow had been going on for at least an hour before the beating. Social media video also may help explain how it all started with the victim throwing an orange bucket at a white infinity in an attempt to stop the illegal car show. That's when the car stops and multiple people get out and chase the man down. Video then shows several people in the crowd kicking and hitting him until he stops moving. Then someone places the bucket on the man's head. Concerned neighbors explain weekly sideshows are only clearly becoming more dangerous. Uh, that I can't let my wife and my daughter walk to the store or anything anymore. You know, I have to, we have to drive to go everywhere. Investigators say the victim is out of the hospital after being treated for broken bones. Police are looking for the suspects involved. Mayor Shang Tao is calling the beating senseless and says our office is working with the sheriff's office to implement sting operations to crack down on illegal sideshows. She said in a statement, quote, the brutal attack was just the latest example of how illegal sideshows put our communities at risk. More than 100 vehicles were involved in the sideshows across the city Sunday, including this one in East Oakland, where police drove through dirt bikes and ATVs on 42nd Avenue and International. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days, society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, 
haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. A small business is ransacked by thieves in mere seconds. Four masked robbers shatter glass cases, then stand on top of them to reach all the handbags on display. The smash and grab took place at a luxury consignment shop called JJ's Closet in Old Town Spring, Texas. The high-end Louis Vuitton bags seemed to be the target as other brands remained on the shelf. You can see one of the robbers in a red sweatsuit with his pants hanging down to reveal blue underwear. The small business owners are hoping someone will be able to identify the crooks by their body build and clothing. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5-13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. As a major storm is bringing heavy rain and wind, disrupting travel across much of the country, Ginger is tracking the very latest for us. Strong storms are blasting across Alabama, headed into the Florida Panhandle and into Georgia, and eventually all the way up the I-95 corridor. But we have already seen the power of this storm system. Watch for the areas highlighted here to even have a tornado, because we certainly had reported ones last night. Overnight, the southeast blasted by at least five reported tornadoes, winds over 60 miles per hour, and driving rain. In Cottonport, Louisiana, rescuers pulling three people out of a destroyed mobile home after a reported tornado ripped it apart. In Alexandria, storm chasers spotting twisters in blinding rain. In the tornado. Trees splintered and some struck by lightning. Hail pelting chasers in Faraday. And in Brookhaven, Mississippi. We're staying here. We're not going any farther. Too dangerous to drive on. Near Jackson, a possible twister clawing at homes and vehicles. You can see they do have a blue tarp on top of the truck, and that is because a tree fell on top of it. First, we do want to catch up on what's been happening over this past weekend, and we've had a really tragic situation unfold on the island of the Dominican Republic. So heavy rain has crossed the island. A lot of this is really fueled by tropical moisture, and we've had a highway collapse. And look at this dramatic rescue video. You can see them trying to pull people into a safe area. Unfortunately, the situation has turned deadly. They've lost 20 people just this weekend because of the flash flooding. You have new video this morning of floods that killed 21 people and destroyed thousands of homes in the Dominican Republic. Check out the video here if you can. Come a little closer to your screen. You can see rushing water dragging vehicles down streets and flooding buildings. More than 13,000 people are displaced as a result of this. Officials there now dealing with power outages and damaged infrastructure. Nine of the deaths are related to a highway tunnel that collapsed over the weekend. The video shows the severity of the flooding that killed 21 people and destroyed thousands of homes in the Dominican Republic.
You see the water just dragging cars down the streets, flooding buildings. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. An attack in the Red Sea not far from Israel raises new fears that the war in Gaza could spread across the Middle East. Pro-Palestinian rebels from Yemen took over a cargo ship on Sunday and recorded themselves doing it. As MTS Tayyab reports, it's showing the frightening capability of the Iran-backed fighters. In a slick, propaganda-style video, a Houthi-manned helicopter emblazoned with the Yemeni and Palestinian flags landed on the shipping vessel in the Red Sea. And in what Israel is calling an act of Iranian terrorism, the heavily armed Yemen-based fighters filmed themselves storming what they called an Israeli cargo ship, taking the crew members hostage. Israel denies any connection to the British-owned Galaxy Leader, which is operated by a Japanese company. But earlier this month, the Houthis, who have long been supported by and received financing from Iran, had warned of plans to target Israeli vessels in retaliation for Israel's war on Gaza. And for weeks now, the Yemeni rebels have been using drones and launching long-range missiles at Israel in solidarity with Hamas, most of which have been intercepted by U.S. warships in the region. The Houthis are a fierce fighting force. For nearly a decade, they've been locked in a brutal civil war with Yemen's government, triggering one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. The Yemeni government is supported by a Saudi-led military coalition that successive U.S. administrations have backed through arms sales. And a U.S. military official has said the seizure of the vessel is a, quote, flagrant violation of international law. But the Houthis are warning that the hijacking was only the beginning of what it's calling a battle at sea. And the fear is if more vessels are taken and more missiles are launched at Israel, it could pull other countries into this already devastating war. Israeli forces say they've hit 250 terror targets over the past day, as Hamas leaders say they are close to a potential prisoner swap deal oh. with Israel. Wow. Trey Yanks on the ground in southern Israel with more details on the negotiations. Trey. Hey, Todd Carly, good morning. It does appear the final details are being discussed toward a ceasefire that would end fighting in Gaza for up to five days and include the release of some hostages. We do understand, according to Hamas leader Ismail Haniya, that a deal is approaching. Reports indicate it would include the release of dozens of Israeli and foreign citizen hostages. Now, the hostages are expected to be only women and children and would be exchanged for prisoners being held in Israel. It comes amid intense battles in Gaza as Israeli forces work their way across the Strip. There are reports today of hundreds of Palestinian civilians stuck in northern Gaza's Indonesian hospital. Twelve people were killed there yesterday. The Israeli military says it targeted 250 different Hamas sites over the past day, killing dozens of militants. Also, three additional tunnel shafts were destroyed in the Jabalia area. The fighting on the southern front comes as Israel's border with Lebanon remains active. The Israeli military says it struck three separate militant cells today, in addition to launching new strikes against military infrastructure belonging to Hezbollah. This comes in response to new anti-tank guided missile attacks and renewed mortar fire. The region bracing for difficult days ahead, but again, that one piece of hopeful news that hostages could be released as part of a larger ceasefire deal. Let's bring in retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, defense priority senior fellow and a military expert. Dan, I want to put up this map. This is the latest tally of attacks against U.S. forces by Iranian proxies in the Middle East. They are up to 65 attacks now. And you see right there in the middle of Iraq, the Al-Assad Air Base. 
Uh, as we just pointed out, there was a vehicle attack against that air base. Uh, a Spectre gunship, a C-130, was quickly dispatched to the area and took out a vehicle that was responsible for that attack, killing a number of Iranian proxy fighters at the same time. Uh, this would appear to be uh, probably the hardest punch in the nose that we've hit these Iranian proxies with. Do you think this will dissuade them? Or will they keep attacking us? No, there's zero chance. There, there will be no uh, deterring them. That they are committed to continue doing this, as you've seen every single time we've had these airstrikes, or, or whether it was this one here that actually hit the people that did it. So it's certainly good in that point, finally. If you're going to go after somebody, at least go after the guys who were actually attacking the Americans and not building somewhere uh, which don't deter anyone. The fact is these are going to continue uh, because and if you're reading some of their comments from the region, uh, especially those in, in Iraq, they're, they're saying that they are going to continue to do this. They're trying to suck the United States into more conflict and they want to try to mm. tie them down. Uh, they're not going to stop and it'll continue on until I fear one of us gets killed. It also seems as though Hezbollah has tried to suck Israel into a deeper conflict in the north. It stepped up its harassment of IDF forces, almost kind of goading them to come across the border and give Hezbollah a chance to enter the war fully. Well, there's been an intense exchange of rocket fire across the Israel-Lebanon border. Hezbollah said rockets and artillery it fired from Lebanon hit an Israeli army base in the north. Footage shows the scene including extensive damage to the base. The Israeli military has not yet reported any casualties. Israeli media say the military intercepted another barrage of drone and rocket attacks. The conflict along the Lebanon-Israel border has been increasing in intensity. Yes, it is still largely confined to the border area, a few kilometers on each side of the border, but there has been an intensification in the attacks. The Lebanese armed group Hezbollah, for example, in recent days has been mounting, on average, at least 10 um, operations against Israeli military positions along the border. On Monday, it targeted an Israeli uh, position, uh, heavily targeted that Israeli position in the central sector. And uh, what is rare is that uh, footage, video of the aftermath of that strike has emerged. It is rare for the Israeli military to allow such images to be broadcast of a position uh, largely destroyed, that level of destruction, which some may uh, interpret as a possible warning that Israel could intensify its uh, retaliation against uh, against Hezbollah. It has been carrying out airstrikes, uh, artillery shelling, targeting what it says are sources of fire in Hezbollah positions along the border, but there have been occasional hits deeper inside Lebanon. So Hezbollah targeting this Israeli position with four missiles, what is known as the Burkan missile, that's what Hezbollah calls it. Each one could weigh up to, uh, up to half a ton, so two tons of explosives targeting an Israeli position. Um, people are concerned that uh, this conflict, which has been, you know, confined to the border region, could escalate and could spread. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, Look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. 
But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.